assistance to improve accountability. The guidelines present procedures and internal controls that will direct service delivery units on the means to assess, manage and account for funding during an emergency with efficiency and transparency. Also, KPMG urges governments to develop regulations that would provide clear guidelines for specified portions of the Exemptions Act. There have been a lot of noise and a lot of criticisms about the way it has been done. Now, this law has actually been passed to, you know, to bring sanity. Plus, National Petroleum Authority indicates local content will be protected under the cylinder regulation model. This is reserved for only Ghanaians and the regulator will make sure that every operator in the industry is Ghanaian. We'll bring you the details of our headlines and many other stories shortly. Thank you for staying with us. In our first story, government has launched emergency expenditure management guidelines for public institutions to improve accountability. Deputy Finance Minister Dr. John Kuma says the guidelines are expected to fast-track arrangements to enable institutions to respond swiftly to public emergencies and deliver essential public services. And Ikea Mensa Abrampa takes up the rest of the story. Public emergencies have over the years disrupted government's business, including its fiscal policies, programs and projects. This limits its compliance with public financial management laws and regulations, therefore increasing the risk of internal control overrides, corruption and misuse of public resources. The Emergency Expenditure Management Guidelines for Public Institutions highlights the importance of striking a balance between the need for expedited decision making in deploying funds during emergencies and the requirements to comply with existing public financial management laws. The objective is therefore to standardize, improve and clarify the audit follow-up processes to all relevant stakeholders by detailing the follow-up procedures, responsibilities and actions of concerned parties and related sanctions for non-compliance. The scope, therefore, for these documents will be that these instructions are issued for use by all public institutions in respect of follow-up on audit recommendations contained in both internal and external audit reports, including the recommendations of Public Accounts Committee of Parliament after its consideration of the Auditor General's report. Launching the guidelines, you, Deputy Finance God, Minister Dr. Yes, John Kuma highlighted on the need for effective accountability to generate the maximum outcome in the use of scarce resources in the country. The emergency expenditure management guidelines were created in response to recent challenges, including the global pandemic that tested the resilience of our country's ability to respond effectively to the impact of COVID-19 pandemic whilst complying to the requirement of the PFM Act. Furthermore, the guidelines present procedures and internal controls that will direct service delivery units on the means to assess, manage, and account for funding during an emergency with efficiency and transparency whilst ensuring compliance with various requirements of the PFM laws. Audit recommendations provided in the guidelines are expected to serve as a guide for public institutions to improve on its management of public emergencies. That was a report by Nanikia Mensa Abrampa. In more business stories, one of the big four accounting and auditing firms, KPMG, has called upon the government to take proactive steps in enhancing clarity within the tax administration framework. Specifically, KPMG is urging the government to develop regulations that will provide clear guidelines for specified portions of the Exemptions Act 2022, Act 1083. Senior Manager Michael Boating spoke on Business Focus. If you look at some of the measures that have been taken, um, one of them is, you know, how to operationalize what we call the Exemption Act. So this is uh, an act, you know, Income Tax Act, which is basically to rationalize you know, the process and how we grant tax exemptions and waivers 
to institutions and, and projects. There have been a lot of you know uh, you know noise and a lot of criticisms about the way it's been done. Now this law has actually been passed to you know to bring sanity into it. Um, however, you know there is a you know in, in, in tax law we have the regulations that's supposed to give a proper understanding and how is, you know this an act will be you know roll out. There are a lot of res uh, research which have come up saying that government is losing so much money you know, in terms of tax exemptions and others, more than, you know, it gets from loans and funds and others. So I think these are all key things. And I think we will look at how all these laws will be operationalized because, you know, they sit on the backbone of how revenues are raised in the country. A senior manager at KPMG, Michael Boating there. Away from that, the National Petroleum Authority has indicated that local contents will be protected under the cylinder re recirculation model. The LPG industry is one of the few solely locally owned and operated industries, and the regulator says it is bent on protecting the space. Deputy CEO of the authority, Perry Okujeto, spoke during a media engagement. We've not even included cylinder manufacturing as part of the value chain. And cylinder manufacturers are supposed to be 100% Ghanaian owned. So from the beginning of the chain, which is from the supply side, all the way, every entity that we license must be 100% Ghanaian. So it is reserved for only Ghanaians and the regulator will make sure that every operator in the industry is Ghanaian. That was Deputy CEO of the NPA, Perry Oku Jetu. It's now time for the movers and shakers in the world of business and the academia to come together and deliberate on the way forward for our country in the Three Business TV Thought Leadership Lecture Series. Under the theme, Ghana's claim of economic self-governance and independence, a myth, reality or the need for paradigm shift. The program will feature Kwame Pienim, renowned economist, with Mark Bedu Abwaje, CEO of Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Professor Godfred Bokwin, economist at the University of Ghana Business School, Adobia Esiama Abwaje, Vice Chair, AGI Tema Branch, moderator is Alfred Okanse of Media General. Date is Wednesday, August 9, 2023, at 9.30 a.m. prompt at the Executive Theatre of TV3. Come and let's move Ghana forward together. Meanwhile, an economist, banking consultant and lead facilitator, Dr. Kojo Abwaje Debra, shared highlights of the program in an interview with Three Business. That claim that we can govern and manage the resources, the reality today is giving us a different, and we think we've got to a point where there's the need to assess this in a more detailed, and then whether it calls for a paradigm shift. Paradigm shift means that there's the need to have a common agenda, the way things should be done, and a leader who can mobilize us to be able to create food, shelter, including and wealth, and reduce poverty. That is the essence of why we're choosing this. So we've got to a point where there's a crossroad, given where we are, the present evidence. You see, we are looking at assessing past, present, and future. Past is giving us to this reality and to this reality is calling for a new shift and that new shift means that as the people of ghana we need to come to it with a common purpose that common purpose is calling for a new agenda and we expect advocacy spearheaded by parliament to be able to drop that agenda. You heard Dr. Kujo Abwaje Debra, an economist, banking consultant, and lead facilitator of the Thought Leadership Lecture Series. Let's take more stories. The Bulk Oil Storage and Transportation Limited has indicated it has already exceeded its revenue target of 3 billion CDs for 2024, two years prior. Managing Director of Bost Edwin Alfred Provincial further stated that his outfit made over 320 million CDs in profit in 2022. He was speaking at the third edition of the National Governance and Business Leadership Summit and Awards in 2023. I am happy to state that we have achieved our 2024 revenue target of 3 billion Ghana cities in 2022 and we are in 2023 and 
and our target was 3 billion for 2024. We have achieved that in 2022. After 11 years of making losses, your company bust improved corporate performance from a loss of 459 million Ghana cities in 2016 to a profit of 161 million Ghana cities in 2021. In 2022, your company called BOST has more than doubled the 161 million Ghana cities profit. This trend has come to stay. Managing Director of BOST, Edwin Alfred Provencal there. Let's now take a listen to how the city is faring against major trading currencies and how some of our key commodities are faring on the global market. On the interbank foreign exchange market, where banks trade amongst themselves, the dollar recorded no price change, selling at 11 cities. The British pound recorded no price change, selling at 14 cities. The euro gained one peswa, and it's selling at 12 cities, one peswa. However, be guided that these figures will be higher at a Forex Bureau near you. On the global commodities market, price of cocoa is down by 0.03%, selling at $3,497 per ton. Price of Brent crude oil is down by 0.44%, selling now at about $86 per barrel, while the price of an ounce of gold is down by 0.34%, selling at about $1,936. That was a trip to the Forex and Commodities Markets. That will be all for Business News on Sunrise. My name is Minwa Fo. For more business stories, please check out our website, 3 newscom Stay tuned. Sports News is up next. Does winning mean to you? For Yao, it's seeing the joy in his mother's eyes after he provided her with a state-of-the-art kitchen to cook her signature Unapo Jolof. It's a mega win. For Ajua, it's turning her passion for photography into a successful career while providing her children with the best education possible. It's a mega win. For Kwame, it's becoming his own boss and starting his music business. It's a mega win. Whatever winning means to you, Mega 6 Lotto can help you achieve it in grand style. With only 49 numbers to choose from, the odds are always in your favor. Play with as little as two Ghana CDs for a chance to win millions of CDs every week. Download our Android and iOS apps. Dial star 266 hash or visit mega6loto.com to make a mega impact on your life and the lives of others. Mega 6 Loto. Mega winnings, mega impact. The Mega 6 Loto is regulated and monitored by the NLA. 3FM 92.7. Urban Lifestyle Radio Station. Hello, good morning, and welcome to Sunrise Sports on 3FM 92.7. My name is Kelvin Olson. Uh, Sunrise Sports is proudly brought to you by Mega 6 Lots of Six Numbers can't change your life. All you need to do, if you want to win 1 million Ghana cities today with only 49 numbers to choose from, Mega 6 Lotto offers you the opportunity to win exciting prizes. Don't forget to play before 5 p.m. every Monday wednesday and friday that is every monday wednesday and friday before 5 p.m dial star 266 hash or download our is and android apps on mega 6 loto.com to play mega 6 loto is approved and regulated by the nle be a winner today let's begin from Kumasia Santi kotoko and the officially unveiled their new head coach prosper nate ogum at the conference room of the barbara sports stadium on monday in attendance was the club's imc nana ewa former Ghana uh, coach and club legend Kwesi Apia and club administrator Emmanuel Newton Dasoberi, technical director for the Porcupines. Kwesi Apia called for support for the new coach to excel. Very big thing, and each and every one expects 
him to be winning trophies and whatever. But um, the intention of the king, Otunfo, is to make sure, make sure the IMC we try and prepare a team, especially the youth, and then we should not put pressure on anybody. The intention is to give the coach the free hand and the opportunity to be able to express whatever he wants to impart on the younger ones. So I'll play, take this opportunity to plead with every supporter that they should all bear with us, especially the coach, that we are building a team and the ambition is to make sure by from next year, next two years, you know, we should, com we should be competing at the highest level, you know, trying to get a cup, but we should not put pressure now that, as you are aware, the number of, if you look at the number of players that are being sent out, you know, and the number of players who are coming in, you know, it takes time to blend. And uh, this is a time where we need your help as well in terms of support and even when things are tough, this is where we will need you uh, most. Coach Kwesi Apia there now to prosper Nate Ogum himself and he's also a member of the IMC. He shared his first words on his return to the club uh, to coach for the second time in three years. I am overly excited. I'm, I'm so overwhelmed. I think there is nothing in my life uh, probably apart from the day I got married uh, that can be compared to this moment. Uh, and, and I am overly excited based on the fact that I've been chosen by His Royal Majesty Utum Force to two, the second and the whole of Asantiman to lead or to direct the technical affairs of this renowned and successful club on the continent and of our nation. Great players, excellent players, including a former captain and a former winner who sits right on my right hand side with me today. Very few coaches have had the opportunity to direct the technical affairs of such a great club. And that is why I see myself to be privileged and to be humbled to be here today. I would like to express my sincere gratitude to the King, to the whole of Asantiman, all stakeholders of Kumasi Asante Kotok. Well, so that is Prosper Nate Ogum Burton Wilson Asari, formerly of Inter Allies, Moro Ibrahim, who is former West Africa Football Academy and PAC, uh, that is Pak Academy coaches, as well as David Dixon Oklu, are the assistants to Prosper Nate Ogum. Well, this is what he says he wants to achieve with the new assistant without Johnson Eduafo. Definitely, you can't coach Kumasi Asante Kotoko and you will not be thinking of winning trophies. But then, what this time around the approach is going to be is the first year is going to be used to, to put the team together. Uh, we need to put together a very formidable team, a very respectable team that can compete on the local and international front. So that's going to be for the first year. And within this year, we'd want to look at the players that we are going to have now and then look at those we can, we can, we can use in the subsequent years because we want to build a team that will be consistent, that will be repetitive in performance. Uh, what this means is that we are going to have a game model where the youth team, which is key uh, to this program, this is my second coming, would also play in the same way. We are going to have a youth team who are going to be residential. Because of that, I've also brought in coaches, youth team coaches, who have seen it before to help in that process. What this means is that these youth players are going to be given the opportunity, those who excel will be given two, three times to train with the first team. And per the FA statutes or regulations for the league, you have 10 youth players who can also play. Well, now the club visited the life patron and owner of the club is Royal Majesty Utum for say to the second ahead of their trip to begin their training camp for the new season at Beposo. Utum for addressed the team after pledging to uplift the club's training facility. <laughs> Toilet facilities done, and 
well, so that is Prosper Nate Ogun being addressed by His Royal Majesty Otun Fosei to that he should take his time to build a very solid team and to the players they must dedicate and devote themselves to building a very solid team to conquer Africa, not just on the local scene, but they need to be patient with the world. Let's move on to the Women's World Cup. Co-host Australia never looked in trouble as they reached the quarterfinals of the Women's World Cup with a 2 0 win over Denmark. The Matildas have made uh, a past the round of 16 but that they have never made it past the quarterfinals at the world cup well they will either play against france or morocco who are playing this morning kelly ford scored the opener before Haley russell so uh, smashed the ball into the in the 71st minute to seal the second for them for england it's chloe kelly who got the winning goal in the european championship final against germany to spark those celebrations another here And that was how England, who were just a, a woman down, uh, defeated Nigeria 4 2 on penalties to book their spot in the women's World Cup quarterfinals. England had Lauren James sent off in the 87th minute after she walked uh, across the back of Michelle Alozi but uh, endured extra time with one less player. Now both England and Nigeria missed their opening spot kicks, but the English side recovered with Beth England, Rachel Daly and Alex Greenwood, as well as Chloe Kelly all hitting the net. Nigeria missed uh, two kicks uh, through Dizel Paranozzi and Michelle Alozi. Journalist Ayo believes that this Super Falcon performance is commendable. However, tactically, the coach lost the game in extra time. I, I think the game was was lost from the bench. You know the tactical so the tactical changes the coach made after England went one player down. Uh, I think that record was around the 80th minute, so we had 10 minutes, 10 minutes of uh, of time plus uh, additional time, and uh, it was a see at that point we, we switched off. You know it was what you expect that. Uh, will make will make the numerical advantage count. It was at that point we sort of switched off, and. Uh, the changes as well, um, not to rain on anyone's parade, but I thought uh, Odega for Francesca, uh, Francesca Odega for Kanu was was not good substitution. Kanu uh, was played very direct, was causing the English defense a lot of trouble. But the moment she went off and Odega came on, Odega didn't particularly do much. I mean, I would have thought a younger player in Mondegi who was on the bench could have come in to do a, a better job for the Falcons. So. So that is from Ayo now. Today's games, France against Morocco and Colombia will be playing against Jamaica. These are the games coming up now. Uh, moving away to some more news. Pep Guardiola is confident that once Ellen Haaland gets back to his rhythm, he will be start firing again. Haaland had zero shots in the community shield against Arsenal on Sunday. Not a lot. He's a winner. He's a good mentality and minutes and rhythm and... And that is what uh, what he needs. He's so tall, so big, he can move this body. It's completely different than Bernardo, for example, or Phil, or the other players. So that's why he's a uh, yeah. He's a uh, today he play 60, 65 minutes, and yeah, and I'm pretty sure against Barley will be will be in better condition. Well, he's going to be in a better condition as Manchester City opened the new season against Burnley on Friday in the Premier League. Now to some transfer news. Tottenham Hotspur head coach Angie Postecoglou has spoken about Bayern Munich's deadline for the club to accept their offer for Harry Kane. I can't wait for a decision either way to get going because 
you know, we, we, we don't have the time or, or the luxury to do that. So, um, you know, I'm working with what's in front of me and um, you saw today that, you know, Harry's certainly um, invested in what we're doing and, you know, we'll keep doing that unless something changes. He's a fantastic striker, one of the world's best and, um, you know, I think the way the team plays will help him as well, you know. I mean, you know, he, he loves scoring goals and... As you saw today, we can create a lot of chances, so he's going to be the beneficiary of that. I, I, look, again, I'm not going to ask, tell people how they feel or what they want to read into it at the end of the day, and I don't even know, you know, like, you know, um, sort of what's in Harry's mind, let alone um, anyone else's. So that is from Angie Pustikoglu on Hurricane Moises Caicedo missed training on Monday and sources close to the player says he is frustrated over Brighton's stance around a potential move to Chelsea. Brighton still do not expect anyone to read the evaluation for Caicedo and insist the situation has not changed. Brighton CEO Paul Barber is confident that Moises Caicedo will remain at the club. He had a, a slight a hamstring injury uh, late in training um, and was pulled out for, for that reason. So again, with a, a Premier League season starting in a week from now, it makes no sense to, to risk him today. I mean, obviously there's been significant interest in Caicedo from another Premier League club. Uh, will this affect that development? No, not at all. Um, as far as we're concerned, you know, we're looking forward to Moises starting the season with us. He's a Brighton player. He's under a long contract. Um, he's probably one of the most exciting midfield players in the world, and we're delighted to have him. So that is from Brighton CEO Paul Barber. Now Liverpool have had a third bed rejected for Southampton midfielder Romeo Lavia. The latest offer for the 19-year-old Belgian is believed to have been about £46 million, including add-ons, with Southampton reportedly wanting £50 million. He joined the Saints from Manchester City last summer for £10.5 million. He made 34 appearances in all competitions for Southampton in the season. Now PSG have signed Portugal striker Goncalo Ramos from Benfica on a season long loan deal. The 22 year old scored a hat trick for Portugal at last year's World Cup in Qatar and has attracted interest from numerous top European clubs. He netted 27 goals in 47 appearances for Benfica in the 2022 2023 season. Now at PSG, they have become a crisis club in addition to Kylian Mbappe. And the problems in closing the signings of Usman Dembele, there is now the rebellion of another of his stars. Neymar, the Brazilian formerly of Barcelona, has reportedly announced to the PSG board of directors that he is not going to stay and he wants to leave and join FC Barcelona. Kai Sohiko gives us a lot of updates on the current situation with Neymar. My information is that at 31, the new head coach, Luis Enrique, doesn't really see him as a key player for him going forward. At 31, he's not the kind of player he's going to build a new PSG side around and PSG have been open to selling him in the past. It's been well documented that they've had approaches for instance in January there were lots of reports that Todd Burley the Chelsea co-owner wanted him at Stamford Bridge. So it's been a very very turbulent summer so far already at PSG and I've been told that it's going to carry on becoming even more turbulent. Well, turbulent for the Parisians. Now, RB Leipzig must start the new season without midfielder Amadou Haidara, the 25-year-old injured his calf in Saturday's 3-0 friendly win over Las Palmas. And the club said on Sunday he will be out for a few weeks, expecting a very good turnaround yesterday. After his can, he's expected to miss the German Cup winners clash with league champions Bayern Munich. And the Bundesliga started by Leverkusen next uh, a week later. Leipzig have lost a couple of stars, including striker Christopher Nkunku to Chelsea defender Josko Vardio to Manchester City. Now, former Arsenal midfielder Ainsley Midlanels has become a new Olympic Lyon player after completing a deal to join the Ligue 1 giant. The 25-year-old is a product of Arsenal's youth system but departed the Gunners playing for Southampton last season. Lyon confirmed their signing on Monday with Midlanels penning a four-year deal until 20. 27. So that will be all for sports this morning. It was probably brought to you by Mega Six Lotus. Six numbers can change your life. Well, all you need to do if you want to win 1 million Ghana cities today, as with only 49 numbers to choose from, Mega Six Loto offers you the chance to win exciting prizes. Don't forget to play before 5 p.m. every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Dial star 266 hash or download our iOS 
and Android apps on Mega6Loto.com to play. Mega6Loto is approved and regulated by the NLA. So you have an opportunity to win lots today. It's Tuesday. So prepare for Wednesday and Friday. My name is Kelvin Oso as the sunrise continues on 3FM 92.7. Have a very wonderful Tuesday.